Oh, hey, it's Wes. And today, since this is an inherently mobile device, we're going inherently mobile to take this video being shot on an iPhone 14 Pro. We're talking about the Godox Cube, the new wireless microphone system specifically for mobile. And as always, we're going to start with the build quality. You'll immediately notice this is a very cute little package. A nice little slide open, click open design, which feels like it has great fidget potential, but I'm not sure that you would want to do that because I'm not so sure that that uh, locking open close mechanism is really designed to do that thousands of times like an AirPod case might be. You see some big seams from the injection molding, but very nice fit and finish. Have some cute little charging lights on the side, USB-C port. The device is snug right in really well with magnets. Of course, everything's magnets now. Obviously, this is not waterproof. We don't see very many things that are waterproof in this space. On the devices themselves, the button feels very cheap and plasticky. The device has a bit of a heft to it though, but I don't know if you could make a button that feels fantastic for this sort of form factor. It's all magnetically based, so you can use the magnet built into that, or you can magnetize and put the clip on it. I'd rather you use the direct magnet because you're reducing your points of failure there. Overall, this is a very nice design, and I would give this an 8.5 out of 10 for build quality. Lightweight and plasticky, but what are you gonna do in this form factor? Yep, we are going full iron snail for this video. Feature set. There is one feature that this has that nothing else that I'm aware of has. We're going to talk about that last though. Number one, ultra compact, 2.4 gigahertz, 24-bit compression transmission. They say that you're looking at a 300 meter range, but realistically I found that 50 meters is the most that you want to go safely for this. If there's anything in the way or any other people or wireless devices. 10 hours of battery life on these tiny little transmitters. How? I don't know. I have no reason to question that. They've held out great for me. 30 hours total because the charging case can recharge them twice. So not a big battery in here considering that these batteries are just minuscule. We have no screens, just tiny little LEDs, which can be confounding. We'll talk about that more in usability. The wind muffs are easy to attach, but also easy to press the buttons while attaching them. We don't have any internal recording or knobs or, you know, all those other luxuries that you might get with having a much larger form factor. But we do have a unique function that you can double tap this button to start recording. I can't show you that because that will stop my recording. We're recording on mobile. You have ambient noise reduction, which through the Godox app you can customize to be gentle or aggressive. And we'll talk about that later on when we test the sound quality. The most interesting function and feature on this is that we have Find My Support. You can open up your Apple Find My app and see where it was last found and make it make a sound. This is fantastic for me. I'm constantly losing my charging cases for my wireless mics. Some people won't make a big difference, but for me, it's kind of huge. Now, it doesn't do the directional finding with ultra wideband, just does the basic finding, which is enough because the speaker built into this is very loud and you will hear it anywhere in the house. For feature set, Honestly, really nothing comes close. There's really only one direct competitor. We'll talk about that more in value. It's gotta be a 9.5 out of 10. We are missing a jack for audio monitoring. I don't know where they would put it. However, I would like them to make that receiver just a teeny tiny bit bigger to put that jack in there. Then I would have given it a 10 out of 10. Because the receiver, it could be a tiny bit bigger. It doesn't matter. It's the transmitter that matters. You can hide it on yourself. <sighs> Sound quality. I'm not the boss of you. How do you think this thing sounds? For me, I was expecting this to sound exactly like the Magic X-T1 from Godox, which I thought was just phenomenal. It had just way better sound quality than it had any right to have. This one I find is just a little bit more muted, a little less sibilance, which is good for some people, not good for others. So sound quality is going to vary based on your vocal preference. So this is what it sounds like outside of my shirt. Let's switch it around. And this is what it sounds like inside my shirt. Which do you prefer? I'm gonna go back and forth on this video because I can't quite decide. The X-T1, I preferred the sound inside my shirt because I found outside it was a bit too harsh. This one, I kinda like it better outside of the shirt because again, this one has a softer, darker tone to it. Not that long ago, this would have been a 9.5 out of 10 for sound quality for a wireless device like this. But we've come a long way, and again, that Magic X-T1, I have to give this an 8.5 out of 10 for me. What would you rate it for sound quality? First of all, as always for the usability test, we're gonna go do our range test to see how that compares. Okay, so here we are outside. We are testing between our current Tied for Champ, the Godox WEC-S, versus the new and teeny tiny Mobile Edition. 
Let's see how we go. Same test as always. We do have the wind muffs on both of these. No noise reduction has been applied. So we'll see how that goes. And here we are, a pretty normal distance away to be filming, say, a wedding ceremony or something. I don't know how many weddings you shoot on your phone, but we'll see. Now we're going to duck behind just the little corner of the house here, just a little bit of wood between me and you. Do a little turn around and come back again. And we're back out. And now let's have our walk to the 100 meter mark. Now we're facing away, so these have to pass through my body to get back to the camera. We're walking through the field. <coughs> Getting pretty close to the 50 meter mark now, but we're going to keep on walking. I don't know how this is going to do. The uh, Magic XT1 did fairly well in this test, but not as good as the full sized ones. I assume that this has a very similar transmitter to the XT1 since it's micro sized. We are in the woods just through some very thin foliage. There are no big trees between me and you. Going a little further. Continuing on through the woods here until we reach our prescribed 100 meter mark. Turning back toward the camera, I am 100 meters away. I can see the camera. You probably can't see me from here though because we're shooting a 24 millimeter focal length. Working our way back out of the woods. Coming on back, coming on back. Here we go, coming back. Coming back there. Now we have a very clear line of sight. You should be able to see me now. Walking back around. Maybe I'll pass behind this tree briefly. That shouldn't make any difference. We're pretty close now. Here we go. Now the WEC is obviously a much larger transmitter. It's flopping around in my shirt, whereas the mobile transmitter here just magnetizes right to me. And now, I'm back up to the camera, but one last part of our test, walking behind the camera in case these antennae are directional in some way. Now that we're behind the camera, I'm going to walk behind the Honda Civic, always an empirical part of this test. I duck down, I rotate around backwards and back forward, and come back around the other side of the Honda Civic, coming around here, and here we are once again, slowly focusing. I think I set my focus to very slow, so that's taking a long time. Well, that was good. Not great, but still pretty solid for something so small. Next, for usability, we're going to talk about how well the noise reduction functions. So, here we are in a slightly ambient noise environment. You should be able to hear the trickling stream behind me. And then we'll turn on the noise reduction. There we go. Noise reduction is on. Now the noise reduction does have two modes, and unfortunately I'm going to have to come over and use the Godox app to toggle between those. So we're currently recording with noise reduction in intense mode. And now we're recording with the noise reduction in gentle mode. How does it compare? I would rather use it in the gentle mode because the intense mode kind of takes away from some of the sibilance in your voice and just, you know, generally robs you of your ambiance. Now one issue that I have with the noise reduction mode is that it is very easy to trigger it by accident. It's such a small little button, and especially while putting on and off the uh, wind muff, it is very easy to trigger that by accident. I'm gonna turn it back off because overall I would prefer to apply the noise reduction in post because then you can decide how much you're applying. But if you're live streaming or not planning on doing any post work, then it is nice to have that capability. There we go, noise reduction is off again. Now, there's a bit of an inherent issue for usability and external audio capture in that sometimes the iPhone does not switch to the external mic automatically. Now, if you're using something like the Blackmagic camera app, then you can easily control that and toggle between and see exactly what you're doing. You can see your audio levels, but in the default iPhone camera app, you can't see those levels. Also, as mentioned, all we have is this one little LED to indicate everything. So it's a combination of blinking and the speed of blinking and the color to tell you what's going on and what isn't going on. And that can be troublesome and a little bit hard. So you can't just pick it up and use it. You have to delve into man the manual a little bit to figure out what you're doing. Because of the inherent issues, they are built-in limitations. I would have given this a seven, but 
you have find my support built into this. While I had some issue pairing this to my phone, I couldn't find that anybody else had the same problem as me. So I would have to say that this was more a me issue than a them issue. However, I've never had that issue with actual Apple products before. So clearly there's a little bit of stuff to be ironed out there. One small issue that I've had is that occasionally I will get a low battery warning on this, which is entirely false because the battery in this is significantly larger than that of an AirTag and will last very long in find my mode. And another great thing for usability is that this plugs in perfectly with my case on. I've had the issue in the past with other mobile devices that it doesn't plug in while I have my case on, so that is nice. So overall, I give that an 8 out of 10 for usability. It introduces some great new features. Super compact, easy to use, find my support. I lose my mics all the time. Thank you, Godox. For our last category, we're going big for value. I hope I don't get hit by a bike. Strictly speaking, the main competitor to this is the Hollyland Lark M2 Duo Lightning, which this is clearly a little bit inspired by. That one comes in at $150 for the one that includes the lightning connector, but there is also the option to get a kit that has camera connector, lightning, USB, C, that's $180. This one comes in at $120 for lightning, $110 for USB C, so it does undercut there. However, we have compared this extensively to the Magic XD1, which is $110. Very versatile, but you know, you can't plug it straight into your phone quite so easily. Now we're only looking at things with an integrated, with tiny little magnetic clips, like teeny tiny, an integrated charging case. So the only other thing on our list at this point is the Boya Omic D Lightning, which is $70. But that has a lot less features, less battery life. I don't even know what that brand is. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, this kind of undercuts its main competitor in the Holy Land. However, it is not the cheapest way of going about this. So I'm still gonna give this a nine out of 10. You've got Find My Support and the super compact form factor in this awesome charging case. Excellent battery life, great sound quality. It is a fantastic value. It's amazing how cheap these things with great sound are getting. <laughs> in conclusion, in total, that gives us a total score of 87%. That is a remarkably high score for such a cheap little device. Good sound is getting cheap, and I'm here for it. What do you think about this, the new Godox Cube Lightning Edition? You can also get this in USB-C for a newer iPhone or an Android phone. Would you add this to your kit? I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes. I don't ask too many more questions or I will be very itchy when I get home. And I need to go take some photos. So you should too.